God amazes me sometimes. I've been walking with him for, for a number of years. I'm thankful for him. In this time of Thanksgiving that we've just come through, I don't, uh, I just don't like to limit myself to being thankful at this time of year. I try to get up every morning and to thank God for, uh, that he woke me up. I mean, that, that he woke me up. You know, I thank him for the blessings, you know. Usually, I mean, most days you get up, the house is, is, is warm. And, uh, I mean, you go, you, you got running water. I mean, we have so many other things open the refrigerator. There's usually something in there. And uh, especially this time of year. Uh, how many are still eating turkey leftovers? <laughs> So you got turkey pie, you got turkey soup, you got turkey this, all these different uh, things of turkey. Well, we've got these things. They aren't uh, that they, they are blessings. They are blessings. I find that a lot of folks show that it's, it's easier to complain, not talking about us, but just the world in general. What they don't have. They want what they don't have. I think the Apostle Paul gave us a great lesson that he was satisfied with what God had blessed him with. In the Old Testament, in Psalm 103, David says the same thing. I wanted to, to book in the scripture there in Psalm 103 with the message that Gail read this morning from Matthew chapter 7 about asking. When we ask God for something, we can't be thankful for something unless we ask for it and we receive it. And God takes things to that to the, to the level that we sometimes don't understand. But the blessings of God are just amazing to us. In Psalm 103, David is writing this psalm, and he's actually singing to the Lord as he writes this psalm. He says in Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits or his blessings. You know, we need to praise the Lord and count our blessings. We sing that song, uh, you know, count your many blessings. We count, we count, we count, we count. We live in America, a nation that has been blessed by God, a nation, a nation whose Founding fathers thought it was important to reference God, to respect God, to love God, to give God the, the proper authority in our lives. To give thanks to Him. These verses where David starts out, this is a prayer of nothing but praise to God. Sometimes you kneel beside your bed, or whatever it is that you pray, I'll kneel beside my bed, you know. A couple of times a day, or in the living room by the couch, or something like that, and pray and just talk to God. I find myself asking, as Gail read for us, asking for a lot of things. Lord, could you help so and so? Lord, could you? There's a need here. Lord, there's this. I'm asking for things. But you know, part of Thanksgiving too, I think, is what David says here. He's just praising God. He's just praising God in, in the first part of these, uh, these verses. He says, let me read it for you again. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, pray, bless His holy name. Thank you, Him, for all His benefits. Sometimes we just need to praise God and give thanks to God just because He is who He says He is. We don't have to ask things of Him. We don't have to tell Him our needs. He knows our needs already, and He wants to meet us. He wants to meet you, and He wants to meet me at the point of our needs. But God loves our praise. He loves our worship. Because He knows that what He has for us is the absolute best thing in the world for us. We've got an enemy out there. We've got... Uh, the devil who goes around as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, 1 Peter 5, 8 tells us. And he's always railing against us. The words that David says here, though, they're full of energy, they're full of joy, they're not dry words. The words of excitement. Was there any excitement at your house, Curry, when the, the, the phrase came out, let's eat, on Thursday? 
started before that came out. <laughs> so there was excitement beforehand. Uh, we need to be excited when God tells us to come to His table to partake of the blessings that He's prepared for us. He says, you know, let's eat. Let's eat. It doesn't have to be physical food. And He blesses us in so many different ways. And we're going to mention them, some of those in just a few minutes. But we're excited about God's love and God's power in our life. And David was excited. But it starts with asking. It starts with asking. talked to several young folks lately. It's important to have a plan in life, isn't it? It's important to have a plan. A plan gives you a direction that you're going in. I mean, nobody just kind of wanders aimlessly. Well, some people may wander aimlessly through life, not having a plan, just living day to day, week to week, month to month sometimes, just hoping to survive. And there's probably periods in life when we all have felt that way. I just want to get through this day. Just want to get through this week. Just want to get through this season. But I think God has something better for us. I think God has uh, a blessing and a direction in our lives that we can know. We can know and be grateful to Him every step of the way. I've been told too within the confines of this this building that we call the church. Of course, you've heard me say more than once that this building is it's four walls, it's brick, it's mortar, it's stone, you know, it's, it's nails and boards and stuff like that. That's what this building is. You are the church. You are the church. This church could meet anywhere. I thank God for this facility, this building that has been passed down down through a Generations. In 1968, I believe, this, this building was built and changes and alterations have occurred since then. And many people have come and gone since then. But they are the church. You are the church this morning. You're part of the bride of Christ where we can be thankful for God's blessings in our life. And He tasks us as part of that blessedness to reach out in our community as we do our best to do to meet the needs of folks in our community this time of year and all year round. David was serious about praising God. And if we're serious about praising God, if we're serious about being faithful to God, if we're serious about wanting to pass God's blessings on that He's given to us, we put feet to our prayers. We put hands to our prayers. I saw this this past Tuesday because of Thanksgiving holiday. We got to be with our uh, food tra- food pantry folks over at First Christian Church. As uh, some of our folks meet over there, it's usually on Thursday but because of the holiday. They moved it up to Tuesday. What a blessing! It is to see this faithful group of people who love this ministry of of our church as we partner with the folks at First Christian to meet needs in our community for people having food. Now some of us probably have have had times in our lives where food food was, uh, was a problem. We've all heard stories. Of, of other folks, and some of us may have experienced it. It's a big deal. Probably in the shadow of this church, in particular, there's people that uh, go to sleep at night hungry. We do our best to meet that need. We try to help, but we can't. You can't help out everybody. Some folks have said to me, well, how do you, how do you uh, decide who you help and who you don't? Well, there's, there's systems in place with the church that we partner with. And we know we can't help everybody, but you know, there's ones that we can. There's ones that we can help, and those are the ones that we have to reach out and minister to. Those are the ones God makes available to us. Those are the ones we have to be thankful for because He gives us the opportunity to make a difference in their lives. 
as he's made a difference in ours. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I like this verse 3, though, when he says, Who forgives all my iniquities. Iniquities are sins, shortcomings, short-sightedness, and he heals all my diseases. Life in a relationship with God is whole and it's healthy. Pastor Wendell, are you saying that I'm never going to get sick if I'm in a relationship with God? No, that's not what I'm saying. Sickness goes far beyond the diseases that affect our physical bodies. Sickness goes far beyond something happening to my hands or my eyes the dreaded cancer in my my body or yours. Yeah, those are big deals. Those things are our heart, are things that within our soul that uh, are far darker than those. Life in relationship with God is whole and it is healthy. As David writes, he understands from this verse that God forgives our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I specifically mentioned to the kids about the Christmas tree this morning, about the aspect of gifts underneath the tree. We're entering that season once again, folks, where you as the church, me as the church, each one of us, as the church, had an opportunity to share with those in our immediate circle, those that we may not even know, we can share the truth of what the gift of this season truly is. We can be thankful for that gift if we know Him as our Lord and Savior. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The world will tell us that there's many other ways, all these different ways to get to God. But Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, I've been told before that I'm very narrow-minded when it comes to the gospel. You know why that is? Because God is narrow-minded. There'll be one day when people will stand before God and they'll say, you know, well, Lord, I did this in your name. I've done all these wonderful good works and I did this and I deserve to go into heaven. But they didn't receive Jesus. They did it of their own works. Their own work. What does my Bible tell me? He'll say, depart from me. You cursed. You know, you're cursed because you didn't come the way I said to come. Some folks have said to me, well, that's awfully harsh, you know, that God would send someone to hell for disobeying Him. Folks, we serve a perfect God, and this season is a reminder of what He gave to us. If we got what we deserved, what would that be? We'd all die and go to hell. But the gift of this season that began with Jesus Christ and ended with the crucifixion and the resurrection. That's what we can be thankful for today. Because God loved us enough that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. He was born for that specific purpose. And when the devil rears his ugly head, and whether it's Perry or me or Cody, or Norma, or anybody else in here, and he says, you know, they're not this, or they're not that, or they're not doing good enough, God, they don't deserve you. Jesus, our advocate, raises those nail-pierced hands. Can we see those nail-pierced hands this morning? Those nail-pierced hands for you, for me. I mean, what did he say to Thomas? Doubting Thomas. He said, I'll never believe unless I can feel what 
my finger in the hole of his hand. And Jesus raises those deal pierced hands to the Father and said, I love Cody. I love Cody. I love Perry. I love Mom. I love Pastor Wendell. And regardless of where they're at or what they've done, they're mine. They've been bought with the price, bought with the price of my precious blood. I paid for them on the cross. Those nail pierced hands. What a blessing it is to think about that. That's the gift. His gift. I'm thankful for His gift today. I'm thankful for His gift today. For the healing of, of, of our souls as He talks about in the latter part of that verse 3b. He heals all our diseases. Not just of our, our body. But he's speaking here of our souls. Our souls. I'm talking about things like fear. I'm talking about things like doubt, depression, anger, lust, hate, jealousy, pride, greed. We all know what these things represent, what these words are. A lot of these things are issues in America today. One the haves and the have-nots, or I don't want what you got, or you know, just to get into the political ramifications of all this, but it's just a mess. I don't want to focus on any of that. I want to look at what Jesus wants for me. I want, as David did, to start this song, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I want to be faithful for what He's done for me. I want to be thankful. No, it's, your pastor's not going to stand before you today and, and tell you he's a perfect man. A lot of these things that I just read to you, I still struggle with them. I still struggle with them. Those nails, nail pierced hands, those nail scarred hands, they go to bat for me. The soul. Soul diseases can be traced back to our, our fallen human nature. <coughs> but God gives permanent healing to our souls. Psalm 147, verse 3, the Bible tells us that He heals the brokenhearted and He binds up their wounds. We can be thankful for that today. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here, but, but just raise them in your mind. Who's thankful for God's blessings in their life? Who's thankful for God's blessings? Who's thankful for God's patience in their lives? Who's thankful for God's authority in their lives? Who's thankful for God's direction in their lives? God's plan. Life. Life in a relationship with God has meaning. In verses 4 and 5 of that chapter 103, the Bible says, Talks about who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercy. What road was I headed before I found Jesus Christ as my Savior? I was on a road to destruction. I was walking toward the, the end of the, the end of the earth, where I would just fall off, not into oblivion, but into a place of torment. For time and eternity. The guy told me one time, he said, Well, you know, I'm going to go to hell because that's where all my friends are. Man, still makes me shudder when I think about it. I took him over to Luke chapter 16 where I had an eyewitness account in hell. We did not want anyone to go there. Didn't want his brothers to go there. Didn't want his, any of his family to go there. Didn't want his neighbors to go there. He says, you know, send someone to tell them that don't come here. This place is off. But that's how good the devil is in what he does, folks. He can convince folks that any place other than submitting to God is where you want to be. Any circumstance other than submitting to God 
bending our knee and, and bowing our eyes and being thankful that, that God commended this little love toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He said, you don't want to do that. You don't want to bend to God, but you want to do it your way. Your way. I'm thankful that God provided the way. And that God proved that His way is the only way. So that way I can know. I don't have to wonder. Not too long ago in our Bible study, we were in the book of 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 3rd John. 1st John 5, 13 tells us that these things in this book, the Bible, that I can hold in my hand, the Word of God that I can read, the Word of God that I can trust, the Word of God that I can apply to my life for a direction, for a plan, for a hope. These things are written that I may know I have Christ as my Savior. Christ as my salvation. Christ as my direction. Christ as my plan. Next Sunday we start the Advent journey. It's that first Sunday of hope. Hope. He is my hope. He is my hope. He is my joy. He is my love. He is my passion. And what a blessing it was to spend time with my parents when I got to talk with my dad and my mom on Thanksgiving Day. Hey, don't get to do that because their parents have gone on. But here this 62 year old man is to talk to I still call him daddy. <laughs> still call him daddy. I love him. We're talking to him about things of God and about his love for God and for his passion for God. I know I mentioned to you to be praying for him because they, 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 they've had a rough go in trying to build this church and he's lost a lot of people over it. Yeah. But his passion for the Savior has not changed. His passion for people has not changed. His passion for souls has not changed. I'm thankful for the example he and my mother have been to me over the years. I'm thankful that we have a Savior who is worthy that we have a relationship with because he forgives our sins and he gives us he gives us meaning in our life. <clears throat> I remember talking with a gentleman one time, for those of you who don't know, I worked in telecommunications for a number of years and serviced the phones of stockbrokers down, Mercantile Exchange and various other brokerage places. Talking with some of these guys who had made more money than I will ever make in 10 lifetimes. They weren't happy. They weren't happy. Because you know how much money it takes to make a man happy? Just one more dollar. No matter how much you got, you want just one more dollar? One more million, one more whatever. Just one more. Because happiness is not found in physical things or toys or stuff like that. Happiness is found in Christ. God gives us purpose. Happiness is a choice, not dependent upon your daily circumstances or my daily circumstances. God gives us meaning. He gives us hope. He gives us hope in all things. Our lives are lived with an eternal purpose. By faith I know, Chuck and I have gone around and round about this in Bible studies. Bible studies a couple of times. By faith, though, we know that when we leave this world on earth, we believe that God has prepared a place. Why do we believe that? Because He said so. He said so. In John 14, He said, you know, He said, If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. That's not Pastor Wendell's promise to you, that's God's promise. That's God's promise. Do we know Him today? Do you have a relationship with Him today? 
His relationship is bound with eternal purpose. Life with Christ gives us meaning. Being thankful gives us meaning. Our lives count for something. They're not lived in vain. How many times have we talked to people, you have, I have, and said, oh, I wish I had done this or that. There's regrets. Each one of us probably has some kind of regrets in our lives that we could have gone left and moving right or forward and moving back or something like that. But you know, a life lived with Christ is regretful. If we allow Him to guide us with the decisions and the choices that He wants us to make, it's a life lived with eternal purposes and eternal hope. This is one of the things David is praising God for. And he satisfies my mouth, verse 5 says, with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. He gives us satisfaction in our old age. He causes us to be back. In conclusion today, I'm going to give you six practical suggestions you consider praising God today and throughout this upcoming Advent season. Let's be aware of God's blessing. As the psalmist says here, as David says, let's not forget his benefits. Let's not forget his blessings. Because Psalm 103 is basically the old version of count your many blessings, named in one by one. Be honest with God. Be honest with your family. Be honest with your friends. Don't be a phony. Don't put on an act. Just be true to God. And enjoy His blessings. Be grateful. Be vocal. Tell people about the gift that you've received. There's no better time of the year than we can share our faith about what Jesus means to us. What that gift that we've received in Christ Jesus as Savior, what that means to us. No better time of year. Tell them what he needs to do. You don't have to tell them what he needs to, to do your spouse or anybody. Tell them what he needs to you. People identify with what he needs to you. Praise God in a way that is natural to you. I think the most important thing any of this. To praise God as David did is to be consistent. Be consistent. I remember one of my teachers at at Valparaiso many, many years ago when he heard that I had been ordained into the gospel ministry. He made this statement to me. He says, exactly what does a gospel minister do when the congregation is not watching? My response to him was, this one does exactly what he does when they are watching. There's no difference. Be consistent. Be consistent in our talk. Be consistent in our walk. Be consistent in our actions. I want all my actions to reflect the love that Jesus Christ has for me. Now, there's times in my life where I wish I could go back and I could erase certain moments. I could unsay certain things. I do my best to be consistent. I will be consistent light to Him. Is that your hope? Is that your prayer? Or perhaps you're here this morning and never trusted Him as your Lord and Savior. It's not a magical formula, it's a matter of choice. Do you know Jesus? We admit that you're a sinner. We believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and we accept Him. The price that He paid on this cross. Those nail-scarred hands. Those nail-pierced hands. They were pierced for you. Do you know what you If not, why not? You can be thankful for the greatest gift you could ever receive. See me after church. I'll take God's Word and I'll show you how you can know you can know. You can know your child. Amen? Amen. Amen.